Morning, class. Uh, this morning we're taking a look at the carbon cycle, and then we'll also take a look at pH, or a little bit of the chemistry of pH, and then we'll end with trying to understand how uh, the carbon cycle and pH lead to what's called ocean acidification, or uh, the ocean ultimately becoming uh, slightly more acidic uh, because of a change within the carbon dioxide. So uh, the picture that you have here is the carbon cycle, and I'm gonna run through the carbon cycle to try to describe um, its path, and, and um, it's sort of a confusing diagram, but if we move it into chunks, we can uh, better understand sort of the movement uh, of carbon uh, within the Earth system. So let's look at all the ways carbon gets into the atmosphere. So we'll start on the side over here. We've got fossil fuels, cement production. And anytime an uh, industry is using water and heat and burning things or melting things, uh, it's gonna add carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, uh, along with all the things that we do in terms of, say, driving our cars, or if we have a fireplace and we create a fire, we too are adding carbon into the atmosphere. So that's this section right here. You can see here, that we've got carbon that goes into the atmosphere out of our oceans. It's sort of a balance. You've got carbon going from the oceans into the atmosphere, and you also have carbon going from the atmosphere into the oceans. You can take a look over here. We've got uh, vegetation and we've got trees that also adds carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So then if we cut down uh, and deforest large areas, that's gonna to lead to less, say, carbon dioxide going into the air. But if we have more people and more cars, we're going to be adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So once that carbon then, um, so how does carbon then move in other parts? Well, we've got carbon that goes as organisms die and it gets locked up in the soil and it gets locked up in the rocks. We've got carbon dioxide that gets taken out of the atmosphere by trees and plants and uh, we also have the carbon that's in the water and so as we take a look at the water we've got surface water it circulates carbon from surface water to deep water and then organisms in the ocean use carbon dioxide as well and then it's also in the deepest of the ocean and then it can be put back into sediments uh, into rock which then ultimately we mine in terms of say oil and coal and then that's what gets broken down and burned and put back into the atmosphere. So that's just a little bit about the carbon cycle and sort of how carbon moves. Now let's talk a little bit about what is pH. So pH is a logarithmic scale uh, and it has to do with the ions of hydrogen. And so the more acidic something is, the more H plus ions, uh, and the more alkaline, the more OH ions. And so you've got the scale, the scale goes from one, which is acidic, uh, to 14, which is basic. So you can see some common uh, household items. Uh, lemon juice is extremely acidic, so is vinegar. Uh, milk is somewhat in the middle. So the neutral or normal number uh, for pH is seven. And so that's the range of like streams and rivers and lakes. You can see corals and shellfish, um, they all fall near eight. And then as you go down, you've got magnesium, uh, you've got ammonia, and then lye is uh, extremely basic. So this is your scale. And now let's take a look at the ocean. So we already mentioned that atmospheric carbon dioxide goes into the ocean. So as more, carbon dioxide goes into the ocean because more people are using, um, again, fossil fuels, you're gonna have more dissolved CO2. Now that CO2 is gonna bond with the water and then it's going to form what's called a carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid in the water uh, turns into both bicarbonate, but it also has a byproduct of H plus ions. So, if we have, and if you look on the bottom, uh, if seawater is too basic, then the pH drops. Uh, if seawater is acidic, 
the pH rises. So the relationship here that I want to show is that as increases in carbon dioxide occur, increases in the hydrogen ion occur. And this ultimately uh, leads to the ocean being just a little bit more acidic. Here's a graph to sort of explain that and the relationship between the two. In 1850, uh, the dissolved carbon dioxide content, um, you can see on this side over here, uh, is near 10 or 11. And then as we are moving through time, the dissolved carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing. As carbon dioxide increases, we notice that pH decreases. So it is here near eight, and it is starting to decline. And now again, when a pH number goes from eight and then goes lower, ultimately is becoming more acidic. Now, the unfortunate aspect of ocean acidification is that most, well, not most, a lot of organisms in the ocean have carbon dioxide or calcium, which ultimately has carbon in it, as its shell. So that as oceans become more acidic, organisms don't have the ability to make shells. And well, shells really help them out uh, in terms of their home and protection. So that, and they're also, you know, lower on the food chain, so that can uh, have disruptions there as well. So this is definitely a concerning aspect. I encourage you to type in ocean acidification and do your own research on it. And um, hopefully you can learn something new. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you guys have a good day. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Uh, more to come.